Okay, so I bought these little Tulumnias. They're tiny little orchids. They don't really get much bigger than this. This one has a flower spike. Uh, they're epiphytes. They are found in the Caribbean, growing on small branches and twigs. That's why they're so tiny, because they grow on far out on the branches to get as much sun and as much moisture as they can. So, they usually grow, uh, I got them in these tiny pots, and this one's a tiny. These are just little seedlings. This one's only about eight months out of the flask. Both of these are different types of telomias. Uh This one's a apple hollow cross, and this one's a baby face cross. I don't really know exactly. But they both came from the same breeder, and they both came from the same place. So I'm going to be mounting them on this big piece of manzanilla. You get this at the pet store. It's a super, super hard wood. I put these in my fish tanks. I've mounted plenty of aquatic plants to these. This is just the first time I've ever mounted a orchid. So here I have a more mature Tulumia. Tulumia? I don't know if I'm saying it right. The gentle pink lady. The gentling pink lady. I don't know. See the cute little blooms? They resemble a Oncidium. They kind of remind me of my Sherry baby, but well, they have a little floral scent to them. What's funny about this plant is I bought it in bloom. We cut, it got sent to me, and the person did a great job. It has some nice, healthy, big leaves. It's growing out of a pot with, as far as I can tell, no medium in it. Roots are coming out. I'm not going to mess with this plant. It looks really healthy, really happy in here. The funny thing is, when I got it, these pink ones were all out in bloom. These little guys didn't bloom yet. And look at how different they look. They have more of a yellow color and they have more spots. Uh, these Tulumnias are pretty sensitive when it comes to temperature changes and whatnot. It will change the way their blooms look. So maybe it was because they were under stress from the traveling, but they still bloomed. And uh, I think it's kind of cool. So, let's get to mounting. I'm not mounting this one. So here, um, I see the roots get really stuck on the sides of these clay pots. And uh, I had already removed this one. But you have to be gentle, just kind of grab them at the base, and use your nail to kind of just scrape them off the sides of the pots. That's what I did here. This one has a nice, see how some of the roots just kind of stayed? Can you see them? See? Yeah. Kind of messed up on that one. Um, it was actually this one. So I picked this piece of wood because it had this hole. Now I know that these like just grow on branches, but I figured I live somewhere where it's not <laughs> the Caribbean. I live in Tahoe. So I figured maybe having that little hole would be good for it. I'm just kind of trying to massage the roots out. Spritz it. Spritz it down. Making the roots easier to maneuver. They're all growing in a tangly, swirly shape of the pot. Just giving it a nice little, little home there. I have two different types of moss. This is Spanish moss. Spanish moss is not really what you use for potting plants. I figured it could be good for mounting plants. I just throw some of that around there just to hold in some moisture. This wood here, manzanilla wood, will retain moisture as well while still allowing the roots to dry out. So I don't know. I'm new to this. I've done a lot of research. And I'm just kind of going off of what I've learned in my research. Here's what we have to tie it on with. We have some fishing string or this um, little metal string. You want something. This is for making jewelry. 
You want something that's not going to rot. You want something that's going to stay. I think I'm going to use this because it's more malleable. I can really put it in little areas and crevices, crevasses. Uh, this is my sphagnum moss. Now, take some long sphagnum moss, put it just kind of loosely around the roots, and then just tie it all down. I think that's what I'm going to do. The sphagnum moss will retain some moisture, but sphagnum moss will also dry out really fast. And no water will ever be sitting. Maybe a little bit of water will be sitting in here, but in the little hole. But it will still be absorbed by the, the wood. I think this could be it. Other things you can do for potting these little guys is this and some larger bark. Some larger bark bits. You can just put the larger bark bits in a pot and just put them around loosely, not packing them down, just literally plopping them in there. Done. So I just think it will, it will look really pretty. I'm working with dry sphagnum moss. Let's take a look again. Roots are kind of smashed in there. Roots are along inside. I've got the main plant kind of in this little crevice. Just kind of naturally, hopefully, we'll be happy there. Right? Look at that. That's great. Then I'm going to put some sphagnum moss. Just going to kind of gently, loosely put dry sphagnum moss around it. And then I'm going to start. Tying, tying it on there, making sure that it's not getting off. All right. Now I'm not a pro with this. I'm not a professional. I'll do an update, see how it goes. And uh, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take a bunch of this, my little metal string, get it at a craft store. You can. It's so thin that you can cut it with scissors. Easy, easy. Taking this. And you're just gonna want to work with the with the wood. You can use little creases in the wood, little pieces in the wood to make for grips for your mounting string. Whatever you use. And back here, I'm just kind of root tying it around. Let's see, it just kind of looped it on itself back there. Let me come back down around here. You can use the foot of this branch right here. Let me come back up around here. Back down. Running out, running out. Let me come up here. And then I'm going to twist them together. I'm going to water it. I have my little spray bottle labeled with labeled water. You don't want to mix them up. And uh, I'll be spritzing this guy every day. And once a week I'll probably give it a good dunking. The whole entire piece of wood dunked. And uh, still have some air roots out here. Keep it happy. Let's see if I can pull the plant. I don't want the crown of the plant being too far down in there. That's good. Nice. Beautiful. And it just looks so cool. There we go. Spritz, 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 spritz. Spritz, spritz, spritz. Experiment. We'll see how it goes. Um, I'll be excited to see. I think this will work well for my environment. Seeing that this will... Alone, the moss itself will give off some humidity and these plants like humidity. So this moss being loosely around the roots on a piece of wood will help keep the area of the roots in a more humid, moist environment, but at the same time allowing air to easily go in and dry the roots out. Um, also, this piece of wood is a dry piece of wood, so it's going to actually suck some of the moisture out and into itself 
eventually this this wood could become waterlogged and oh, we'll see this is what I use for mounting other stuff let me show you where I keep these guys all right here is my garden window it's south facing as well so this is where I'm going to be keeping my telinias. Uh there's the one I just mounted next to the one I just kind of repotted now I hear these guys don't really like being repotted they don't really like being mashed smashed around these guys are young so I'm hoping they'll be okay you got a flower spike here and they're at the farthest back to the window I can spritz them from here, close to the sink for watering. They get lots of light here. They'll be warm by the sun. Here's my other one. And what's this? Oh, I have a tiny humidifier for them too. I have a little tiny humidifier, keeping them moist. And I check it. My humidity has been as low as 30, but also as high as 50. Um, my average is about that. 42, 43. Oh, it got about 84 in this window, but it also dropped down to 55. But the average tends to be in the 60s right now. As you can see, it's winter time. So, we'll see. I don't know how good I am at growing these guys. They're living with some Phalaenopsis. The oldest reblooming for me. This one, haven't seen in a while. It's spiking for me. That's a rescue. Alright, so that's that. Polonias. Fascinating little plants. I really think this is going to be a happy plant. Yeah. This guy, only time will tell. He's kind of sad looking. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you for watching.